this morning. Uh, as you know, it's Confirmation Sunday. Uh, we're very thankful we have uh, 10 confirmands, and uh, I wanted to just uh, do one brief note of thanks. There's many people in the congregation who've uh, helped, of course, with congregation, but uh, if you see along the sides all the banners uh, that are hanging, uh, Grace Cunningham has made those, and she was here last night, but just wanted to give her a thanks for making the banners for us. And we have uh, Vacation Bible School, June 10th through 13th, and it's uh, from 6 to 7.45 p.m., and registration is now open. Uh, also, after the service, uh, we'll have uh, photographs with the confirmation class, so um, we'll have pictures afterwards. Uh, and then we will, when the processional cross comes, uh, please rise and face it as we sing our opening hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we will speak the intro it together. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for my soul. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from Acts chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood, and the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Alleluia verse. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that, everyone, that someone lays down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, 
and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for the hymn, Lord, keep us steadfast in thy word. In the name of Jesus, amen. Dear Confirmands, grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What an incredible thing it is to be chosen. When someone wants you on your team, there's not much better feeling than that. In another week or so, the Westminster Dog Show will take place in New York City. To be invited, your dog has to be in the top five for its breed in the entire country. Now, if you're good at a particular sport, you might be chosen to be on an elite team or even on a national team. If you're good enough when you go to high school, you can skip the junior league and go to the varsity team right away. To be chosen by a school with that is considered elite or that has a limited enrollment is quite an achievement. To be chosen by the person who becomes your spouse is one of the most important events that a person experiences in their life. We all want to be chosen. To be chosen is an honor. It feels good when someone picks us, when someone chooses us. In the gospel lesson for this morning, Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed that you should go and bear fruit, and that fruit should abide, so that wherever you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is a tremendous promise that our Lord Jesus gives us. Of first importance is that Jesus chose you. Now, throughout our lives, it oftentimes feels that we are choosing Jesus. For example, all of you made the decision to come to church this morning. And if you became a Christian later in your life, you likely came to the point where you decided that you wanted to follow Jesus and you wanted to come to church. For the compromands today, you, and in some cases, your parents, made you come each week for practically two years to come to confirmation class. And in the end, it may well be the case, you made a decision, you followed through with a commitment, and you decided that you wanted to be confirmed or that you wanted to come to church. 
Yet Jesus in this gospel lesson tells us what the underlying reality or the true situation is. Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. The fact that you made a decision to come to church this morning or that you decided that you wanted to be confirmed with or without the help of your parents is really the result of Jesus choosing you. Our decision in the matter, our deciding, our choosing, is the fruit that Jesus speaks about later in the verse. The importance of Jesus choosing you is that he is the one who decided to make you his disciple. He decided he wanted you to be his own, that he wanted you to belong to him. To use the analogy earlier, it's like the Westminster dog show inviting you and your dog, or an elite college inviting you to attend, or an elite sporting team inviting you to join. Yet in all of those examples, you did something that was worthwhile. You earned it. You did some sort of merit. You did something that attracted those institutions to want you. In the case of Jesus, the scriptures tell us that Jesus chose you before the foundation of the world. That is, Jesus picked you before you did anything before you did anything to earn his attention or his favor. And you see, this is a tremendous comfort for us, knowing that Jesus chose us. If you're on an elite sporting team, if you're on a national team, and if you hurt your knee, or if you destroy your elbow, they kick you off the team because you became worthless to them because you can't play, you can't perform. Jesus didn't choose you because of your athletic ability. Jesus didn't choose you because of your intellect or how smart you are. Jesus didn't choose you because of how you look or how nice your personality is. And the good news for us about this is if you lose your abilities, if you lose your mind, if you lose your beauty, if you turn into a mean person, Jesus still chooses you. In fact, no matter how much you mess up your life, Jesus still chooses you, and he promises not to abandon you, unlike every other thing in this world. To Jesus, you are the chosen ones, and this is a great comfort for us. Jesus continues, I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Because Jesus chose you, you will bear fruit. The decision that you made to come to church this morning is some of that fruit. This, the decision that you make to help another person who is in need is some of that fruit. The decision that you make to hold your tongue and not gossip about another person is some of that fruit. In fact, any good thing that you do in your life is some of that fruit that Jesus appointed you to do. And yet, we don't do good works simply because Jesus appointed us to do it, but rather because Jesus chose us. And then we actually begin to want to do good in our lives and to help other people. The final promise that Jesus gives us in this verse is, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Jesus tells us that he has chosen you and appointed you to bear fruit. And the Father will give you what you ask in Jesus' name. We have access to God the Father because of Jesus. And the Father promises us that he will hear us and grant us what we need. This is another tremendous promise from Jesus. God the Father hears our prayer because of Jesus. And this is why we pray every day, our Father who art in heaven. In Jesus, the Father has already given us all the treasures of heaven. We are just waiting to inherit them and to receive them as our heavenly reward. You can go to the Lord confidently in prayer because he has promised to hear you 
he has promised to answer you. Now this promise is important for every single Christian to hear, and it is especially important for our confirmation students to hear. We will face moments in our lives when it feels as if you are alone. You will face times when you may feel as if you are not chosen. You may experience times when the world seems to reject you. You don't get into the school you want or you don't play as well as you want it to. You might feel as if you've been passed over. And in those moments when you feel as if you're not chosen, remember what Jesus has said, I chose you. You can even pray to Jesus and say, right now I don't feel like I'm chosen, but you promised me. Be faithful to your word, be faithful to your promise that you chose me. When you face hardships and difficulties in your life, remember Jesus' promise to you, I chose you. Jesus has promised to be with you until the very end of the age. And this means that there's never a moment when you are in this world when Jesus will not be right beside you. Even in those moments when you wander away from him, when you go out to explore new experiences in your life, when you think you're too busy to come to church, Jesus still goes out and seeks you. He doesn't leave you alone, but he gently calls you to return to him and to bear the fruit that he has appointed you to bear. As you go forward from this day, when opportunities present for you to serve your neighbor or to serve your church, remember that the Lord has appointed you to bear fruit. You will have many opportunities to bear fruit throughout your life. In fact, as a Christian, you bear fruit every day, whether you realize it or not. Different stages of your life will offer you different opportunities to bear fruit. And the sort of fruit that you bear as a young person is different from the fruit that you will bear when you are young and have children. And it's different than the fruit you will bear when you're in your golden years. When you hear that your neighbor is in need, or that your church needs assistance, or someone to volunteer to fill a committee or to help out cleaning up the property, consider whether it is an opportunity for you to bear fruit. If it's not your time to serve, pray that the Lord raise up another person who can serve at that moment. Because Jesus has chosen you, he also appointed you to bear fruit. Finally, remember, whatever situation you find yourself in, Jesus has chosen you. And you can ask the Father in Jesus' name, and he will hear your prayer and he will answer you. The Father has given you life and salvation. He has given you the riches of heaven because Jesus chose you. Jesus went to the cross to forgive you all of your sins, and there he decided for you. Whenever you are in need, call on your heavenly Father for help and deliverance. Jesus has promised that he will bless you. Go in peace. For Jesus has chosen you. Amen. We ask our confirmation students to please come forward. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age.
You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Do you hold the, all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit even to death? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and truth and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. Rock, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you, and with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Isaiah 43, 1. Fisher, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthening you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Psalm 31, 24. Lucy. Lucy, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. Dexton. Dexton, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. 1 Peter 4.10. Alexander. 
Alexander, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4.12. Dylan. Dylan, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In your ways, always acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Mason. Mason, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthening you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Philippians 4, verse 13. Malaya. Malia, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Emma. Emma, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, has forgiven you all your sins, strengthened you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Psalm 103, verse 8. No. Noel, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38-39. Please rise for prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that, bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous teachings, that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in Him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear the cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. The congregation may be seated and the compromands may return to their seats.
Please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you invite us freely to come and hear your word. Bless and increase our faith that we may rightly fear you and learn what you have done for our souls. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you rule this world by your established authorities in ways that we do not always understand. Yet in the name of Jesus, we may ask you anything freely as friends and sons. Bless our nation's leaders and cause them to serve wisely for our good. Give earthly peace and justice that is in accord with your commandments. Bring an end to injustice, violence, and disdain for your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, the giver of all that is good, grant your healing and support to all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Especially we pray for those we name in our hearts and those from our congregation. For the family of John, for Dylan, for Agnes, and for Phil. Give them also the gift of your grace to accept and bear their crosses with faith in you, that finally they would be prepared to depart this life and receive the gift of eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, at the death of your Son, you gave the testimony of your Spirit in water and blood that poured from his wounded side. Grant that having received this testimony in the water of baptism, we may also receive it in the body and blood of Jesus in the Holy Supper, and so overcome the world by our faith in him. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we receive our gifts and offerings. Please rise for the offertory.
lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shed for you. The true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
body of Christ, given for you. Take and eat the body of Christ, given for you. May Christ bless and keep you in your baptism. Take and eat the body of Christ, given for you.
the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith and the life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
please rise. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Well, ordinarily I tell you to sit down for the closing hymn, but it seems wrong to do so when the song is stand up, stand up for Jesus. So, uh, Please turn and face the processional cross as the compromands exit. 